I'm Casey Claiborne and thanks for watching this Crime Watch YouTube exclusive where we're taking a look at some recent crime stories around Austin and the state. Family, friends and supporters of a Hayes County inmate shot and killed by a corrections officer continue to push for the release of body camera footage. Fox 7 Austin's Kelly Saberi reports. Friends, family and supporters of Joshua Wright came out to speak in front of the Hayes County Commission on Tuesday morning demanding that not only the body camera footage be released, but also that the officer that shot and killed him be fired. The officer involved shooting happened on December 12th at Ascension Seton Hospital in Kyle. Wright had been taken there from the county jail to be treated for what's only been described as a medical emergency. The sheriff's office claims that Wright tried to escape the room and ran through the ER. His family says he was shackled at the ankles, making it unclear how he could have ran. His handcuffs were taken off. His lawyer says an autopsy shows that Wright was shot six times with some wounds entering from his back. You know, I share, you know, the family's calls for the release of the body cam footage, but I am demanding that Officer Garcia be fired immediately, that y'all take seriously these accounts of his violence and the way that he has harmed people. The officer who shot and killed Joshua Wright has not yet been officially identified. Reporting in Hayes County, Kelly Saberi, Fox 7 Austin News. There's a crime wave involving trailers being stolen from people's properties. Some of those thieves are making off with food trucks, putting local business owners in a tough spot. Fox 7 Austin's John Krinjak has that story. I mean, I was I was super hurt. Gordo's Donuts says someone made off with their Airstream trailer either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. I think they just picked the opportune time to do it. It was parked outside a metal storage barn along Highway 21 in Cedar Creek. The thief hauling off a Kubota trailer from inside the barn as well. I'm shocked because it is on a well-traveled highway. Um, it was visible from the highway. The brazen bandit putting a major kink and co-owner Ryan Palmer's business plan. We recently closed our uh, our restaurant that was on South Lamar for the last 10 years um, and we were going to go back to our roots and open two new locations, one south and one north, and this is one of the trailers we were going to open up in January. So uh, it's a big setback. The worst part, Palmer's insurance had lapsed, so it could cost him $50,000 to replace it. We're just asking everybody to keep their, their uh, eyes and ears open and, uh, you know, maybe somebody will see it. Meanwhile, here in North Austin, a bit of good news. The owner of Le Blue here has her food truck back after it was stolen last month. I don't know what they're thinking, but maybe it's just because easy for them to target and like food truck. The Saigon Levendur trailer was hauled off by, get this, a stolen pickup. Surveillance video captured the pickup and the suspect shoplifting at a nearby store. A good Samaritan noticed the trailer near the Travis County Expo Center and 43 year old Justin Williams is now behind bars. It, it's a, a really a bit really because we found a property back and I mean in the back of my mind I for a thousand years I never thought I'm gonna see the trailer again. Thankfully it's still intact aside from a broken lock and a sloppy new paint job. I, I, mean, I would appreciate if they do a better job. <laughs> Back at Gordo's, the South First Street truck is still serving up donuts, but Palmer is hoping whoever stole the other one will have a change of heart. I would just hope that they somehow would just maybe leave it somewhere uh, so I could find it and, yeah. and serve donuts and employ people in Austin. If you have any information on the stolen Gordo's truck, you're urged to call the Bastrop County Sheriff's Office. Gordo's is offering a cash reward to anyone who's able to help them get that trailer back. A manhunt starting in Georgetown. When you see 30 police cars on one street blocking it off, it's it's pretty bad. Ending two hours away in Columbus, Texas, Tuesday. After an unspeak. In three, two, one. A man is accused of murdering his estranged wife in Georgetown. Ricardo Canones was later arrested at a phone store in Columbus. Fox 7 Austin's Shannon Ryan has that story. A manhunt starting in Georgetown. When you see 30 police cars on one street blocking it off, it's it's pretty bad. Ending two hours away in Columbus, Texas, Tuesday after an unspeakable act of domestic violence. Saw that there was a shelter in place 
um, so knew something serious is going on. Georgetown police say Ricardo Canones took his wife, Lindsay, and daughter hostage just before 3 a.m., shooting Lindsay Canones while on the phone with hostage negotiators. She had filed for divorce earlier this month. We know that just the presence of a firearm where there is domestic violence in the home increases the chance for lethality by 500%. The neighborhood went into lockdown. My mom and my sister are in there, so I got to protect them. Police tracked Ricardo Canones to this AT&T store where he was trying to activate a phone using prepaid cards. I guess anything can happen anywhere. Shannon Ryan, Fox 7 Austin News. Four violent robbery suspects have been caught after an assault in Cedar Park. At about 1030 on the morning of December 28th, police responded to a Texaco on Cluck Creek Trail. Cedar Park police say the victim had just come from the bank when someone attacked him, took money, and drove off. Two vehicles and several suspects were involved. Surrounding law enforcement agencies were quickly notified. The Fayette County Sheriff's Office found and arrested the suspects near LaGrange. All four suspects are from the Houston area. Officers found a large amount of cash and surveillance equipment in their vehicles. Police say it appears the suspects could be responsible for several other robberies in the Austin area as well. Austin police are investigating a shooting in East Austin. Police say several people were seriously hurt and multiple suspects have been detained. Police were responding to the area of Springdale Road near Sarah Drive on January 3rd. They say the call came in around 1 from a house party on Ebert Street. APD says one of the three victims has possible life-threatening injuries. Two were taken to the hospital by Austin Travis County EMS and the third person drove to the hospital. It's not clear how many people were taken into custody, but officers were able to find one of the suspects through helicopter and canine support. Police described the scene as chaotic when they got there, as police, or people rather, were running away. Officers were spread out two to three blocks around the area. Multiple firearms were recovered. Officers are still looking into what led up to the shooting. If you know anything, call Austin Police. To North Texas now, where a man is accused of killing his eight-year-old grandson on New Year's Day. Police were called to the home just before 8 Sunday morning. When they got to the scene, officers found the boy who had been stabbed to death. Officers say they did recover an edged blade weapon that was used in the stabbing. The boy's grandfather, 62-year-old Philip Hughes, was found a few blocks away from the home and arrested. Police don't have a motive at this time. And finally, there are new details in a murder case against a man accused of running over a victim with his vehicle, then leading deputies on a chase. According to arrest papers, 31-year-old Mark Skladani from New Jersey showed up at a home northeast of Blanco. After trying to get inside on November, December 12th, Skladani pistol whipped the homeowner, then ran to his vehicle. The suspect drove into a building and hit John Wayne Jones, who died on the way to the hospital. When deputies got there, the suspect shot at deputies while driving off. The gunman broke into a home 25 miles away near Wimberley and again exchanged gunfire with deputies. He stole a vehicle from that house and was eventually arrested the next morning in Zavala County. Thanks for watching this Fox 7 Austin Crime Watch. Our YouTube, our exclusive Crime Watch stories run each Monday on Fox 7 Austin News at 9. Again, to learn more about the stories featured today, look for the links below this video. You can also find more stories on our website, fox7austin.com, or subscribe to the Fox 7 Austin YouTube channel.